So you've completed the Community Center or the Jojima program and heading into late game territory. Here are some great items to keep in mind to progress your gameplay further. Hey guys, it's your girl first and welcome back to another Saji Valley video. Completing the Community Center or the Jojima program is considered a long time goal in the game. So here are some items that become unlocked once these are completed and items that greatly assist in your late gameplay. So let's start with the railroad quest. After the completion of the community center of the Georgia Mart program and seeing their cutscenes, heading to the railroads north of the carpenter's shop triggers an interaction with the wizard and starts you off with the dark talisman quest. Completing the two part quests including interacting with Krobus to get your hands on a dark talisman and then giving the witch's soldier a void mayonnaise would lead you to the magic ink. Hand this to the wizards to unlock the wizard's magic book. Some great late game items can be found here but be prepared for their costs, both gold wise and resource wise. First we have obelisks. There are four in total that can be found within this book and each obelisk can be placed on your farm to teleport you to locations where your warp totems teleport you. For example, placing a desert warp totem to Calico Desert will grant you instant access to the desert. Three will be available via the book right away but a fourth which takes you to Ginger Island is unlocked once Ginger Island is unlocked. More on Ginger Island items will be mentioned later in this video. Next up on the book is the Janemo huts. The Janemos within the Janemo hut will pick up crops in a 17 by 17 area around the Janemo hut when placed. Utilize this efficiently on your farm and the Janemos will pick up crops and have them ready for you to pick up at the end of the day. They do take their time picking up crops so ensure that they have all day to pick up your crops. This will give you time to do other things on your farm and off the farm. Lastly in the book is the gold clock. It is super expensive, being 10 million gold to buy, but this building once placed on your farm will prevent debris from appearing on your farm and prevent fences from decaying. This will not only affect your farm, but also your Ginger Island farm as well. Definitely consider the gold clock if both debris and fences are a bother on your farm, as this is the only way to do this in game, without mods that is, to prevent both. When you're on the quest to complete the wizard's quest, why not check out the sewers and talk to Krobus? Krobus is a great character to know and an awesome roommate if you choose to grow your relationship with him. But he also sells some great things that you can utilize late game. Firstly, every Friday, Krobus will sell an iridium sprinkler for 10,000 gold. If getting your hands on iridium is better utilized elsewhere or difficult to get anyways, definitely consider buying these weekly. For obvious reasons, buying the star drop from Krobus is a great purchase. Here is where you can find one of the seven locations and can only be bought once through Krobus. Then we have the return scepter, super pricey being 2 million gold, but the return scepter will return you right to your doorstep on your farm. This is a better alternative to a warp totem home as this will return you to the spawn point right next to your house. Next up we have the traveling card. Not only should she be checked every Friday and Sunday for her rotating stock to assist with your farm or even completing the community center, but the traveling card has a chance to sell you a special stock at certain times, including rare crow number four, a snowman rare crow, which can only be bought randomly during fall and winter from the traveling car for 4,000 gold or at the festival of eyes for 5,000 gold. Then we have Harvey's clinic, which I'm sure you weren't prepared to hear. This is an interesting one to put on the list as there are two items that can be bought from the clinic that can be best utilized in your late game adventures in the Skull Cavern or the Volcano in Ginger Island. As long as Maru or Harvey are behind the counter, they will sell you either an energy tonic for a thousand gold, which returns 500 energy and 200 health on use, or a muscle remedy for a thousand gold, which returns 50 energy and 22 health, and also removes the exhaustion status on your character, which is when your energy falls to zero. When traveling to Skull Cavern, why not check out the Oasis? Where Sandy has some great things to sell. Sandy will have rotating items available on specific days and this will include the Deluxe Bee Grow. If you're like me and prefer buying your Deluxe Bee Grow from Pierre for 150 gold each, on Thursday Sandy will sell them for almost half the price at 80 gold per fertilizer. A greater purchase to make if you're going to buy your Bee Grows often. If you've gotten your hands on the club car from one of the secret nodes in Stardew Valley, why not venture into the casino and buy yourself a statue of endless fortune? This random guy standing here will be selling 
selling them for 1 million gold, and there is no limit to how many you can buy. When placed down, it will produce you one item or one gift daily. When it isn't a villager's birthday, the statue will have an equal chance to produce you a diamond, an iridium bar, an omni geode, or a gold bar. On a villager's birthday, it will produce one of the villager's loved items. This can either be handed to the villager, or why not keep it to yourself? As mentioned previously, Ginger Island has some notable late game items. As Ginger Island will only be unlocked once the community center or the Jojima program is complete. Willy will send you a message the next day saying that he has something to show you, and that is an old boat which needs repair. Repairing the boat will gain you access to Ginger Island anytime for a thousand gold. There are many things to explore, but you will need golden walnuts, which are all scattered all over Ginger Island to unlock these awesome late game items. If you're still struggling to find all 130 golden walnuts, I have an easy to follow walkthrough on how to find all of these in a video in the annotations. I will link this in the description below as well. Getting a total of 100 golden walnuts is all that is needed to unlock a secret door on the west side of Ginger Island. There are multiple items that can be traded with the Kui coins, a currency only available when completing tasks within this secret door. Every item available to purchase are all useful and can be utilized efficiently, but I will mention 5 items that I use often on my farm and prefer to utilize. These aren't in any particular order either. Firstly, a Galaxy Souls. Their only use is to upgrade any Galaxy weapon you own either a galaxy sword, a galaxy dagger, or a galaxy hammer. You will need to purchase 3 galaxy souls to upgrade your weapon, and this will increase certain stats. It will increase damage and speed on your sword, it will increase damage, defense, and crit chance on your dagger, and it will increase damage and defense on your hammer. Number 4 is key to the town. Once purchased for the first time, this will sit in your wallet. Every building in Saji Valley will now have access at any point of the day, regardless of its opening hours. Having this available will alter some walking patterns as certain pelican residents such as Marnie, Gus, Clint, and Pierre will wait behind their counter even before 9am. This is great if you want to access their buildings without having to wait for their opening hours. Number 3 is the horse flute. Once purchased, this will have to sit in the player's toolbar somewhere. I always want to reach certain areas as quickly as possible and sometimes I forget to take my horse with me. Using this horse flute in an outdoor environment, whether that's Pelican Town or Ginger Island, will play a song and teleport the horse straight to you. Number 2 is the Janemo chests. Purchasing them will reward you with two chests. You can essentially purchase however many you like as they have a special use. Place either chest anywhere you'd like and these chests will be linked forever. You can place them on Ginger Island and your farm but they will all have a shared space of 9 slots. The limited space can be a little annoying but this is awesome to have all your cave items in multiple chests all around the world. And for number 1 is the choice for enriches or pressure nozzles. Both are items that need to be placed on sprinklers to work. Pressure nozzles are best utilized on iridium sprinklers but will increase the sprinklers reach by one tile in each direction. Enrichers will cut down the planting time on your farm or on Ginger Island. Place an enricher on a sprinkler, access it to place any fertilizer of any type within it, and when the crop is placed, the enricher will automatically place that fertilizer with that crop. There are definitely two other notable mentions I'd like to mention. Pierre's missing stock list will unlock every seasonal seed that Pierre sells to be purchased during any season when handed to him. Plus, there are hoppers that are also awesome. They work similarly to a mod called Automate, which I am currently using in my Twitch playthroughs. Definitely come and check out the stream at twitch.tv forward slash fuzzerino. Place items into the hopper and a machine in front of the hopper, and the hopper will pick up usable items to produce product for you. Just be sure to pick up the finished product, or the machine and hopper won't continue to do its job. Alongside these items, there are three recipes you should consider purchasing. The recipe for heavy tappers might be resourceful heavy to craft, especially that it uses radioactive bio, which is crafted from radioactive ore, which is found in the heart of mines or skull cavern. This will half the time of any tree sewer production from common trees, any mushroom production from mushroom trees, and sap from mahogany trees. Hyper Speed Grow, when used, will speed the growing process of a crop by 33%. With the level 10 farming perk agriculturalist, crops will grow 43% faster in total, which is the fastest way that you can grow your crops. Deluxe Fertilizer will best improve a crop's quality, meaning at level 10 of farming, your chance of getting an iridium quality crop when using this fertilizer is at 41%. Lastly on the talk of fertilizer, consider buying the Deluxe Retaining Soil Recipe from the Island Trader to have a 100% chance to keep your crops watered. When used, be sure to water the crops for the first time to keep them watered afterwards. Thank you so much for watching another video and I hope to see you next time. Take care.